All right, good morning, everyone. Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, also a chiropractic physician at Gateswood Health. I'm here with Kathy this morning. Good morning, Kathy. Good morning, everyone. And today we're talking about scoliosis. Is it a brain problem? And this was a recent inquiry from one of our individuals who was asking, you know, is there anything you can do for scoliosis? And I went into a bunch of stuff about the inner ear and the brain and how it's all processed. And so I thought it'd be a good idea to talk about this for everyone. And good morning for those of you who are joining. And so, yeah, that's what we're going to go into today. Any thoughts, Kathy, before I kind of start well, ranting? I, I really never really tied the two together. So I'm interested to see how you uh, connect the dots on this one. Because most people just think scoliosis is maybe something you're born with. Maybe, I think, what we've heard in the past, you know, mm -hmm. this curvature of the spine right. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, why don't you tell us what the brain has to do with the spine? So, the brain and our cerebellum. Our cerebellum controls our balance. It controls many things, really. It controls limb movements, things like this. You've all seen somebody and they go to reach for something and their hand shakes a little bit. Not a Parkinsonian tremor. So Parkinsonian tremors, they're sitting. Let me see if I can bring the camera down a little bit. They'll be sitting and their hand will be shaking at rest. Whereas cerebellar tremors more involve someone who's going to pick up the phone and their hand is shaking like this. And then they set the phone down and their hand is still. So the cerebellum also coordinates our thoughts. It coordinates our eye movements. And in learning neuroscience and neurology, it's really interesting because the cerebellum, the same pathways that control our eye movements also control our spine and our postural muscles. Now these postural muscles are really important for things like balance. So you're walking along, you start to twist your ankle, but you catch it, but you kind of fall, but you're able to catch your balance. Well, that's a postural response. Or somebody, I don't know, there's a famous celebrity who was in, I think, South Africa recently. I don't know if you saw this online, Kathy. But, you know, they're talking to the crowd, and then they get kicked from behind. Well, the posture response is you got to save your balance. That's okay. all inner ear mediated. And it's, it's actually a pretty elaborate system. It's one of the most elaborate systems, in my opinion, in the brain. Your inner ear sends one million signals a second into your brainstem. So your inner ear nerve is firing at one million signals a second into your brainstem. And if there's an asymmetry in how your cerebellum is filtering that inner ear input, then that can affect your spinal posture. And that's what they're thinking with scoliosis. So Kathy, you mentioned that it's a, a problem from birth. They're actually realizing that scoliosis patients, their inner ear forms a little differently at birth that's one new finding okay so we have and i was thinking this morning unfortunately i don't have a great diagram of the inner ear but think of you know like kind of like this so here's a little whatever mouse keypad charger uh usb charger your inner ear has three of these and they're called canals and they're oriented at different angles and these canals have fluid in them so if you turn your head, the fluid moves in the canal, and then there's this little sail mechanism that's a receptor that can tell, is the fluid moving this way or is it moving that way? And that tells your brain what direction your head is turning. And that's why if you turn your head, your eyes will move reflexively within a matter of a few milliseconds. Whereas if I turn my head and I tried to move my eye, it would take like 200 milliseconds rather than 13 milliseconds. So it's a really fast system. Well, I say all that to say, these canals, you have three of them. You have a horizontal, you have an anterior, and you have a posterior in the inner ear. The horizontal canal, they're finding forms a little differently in scoliosis patients. Interestingly, primarily on the left-hand side. So they're thinking that maybe that change is changing how the inner ear is firing to the spinal postural muscles. But it goes deeper. And are we good, Kathy? I think that's a good yeah. place to pause. Okay, all that makes sense? Yeah. Okay. So then going deeper, researchers have now been studying basically balance responses in scoliosis patients, finding that they're abnormal, particularly the worse their scoliosis is, it seems like the worse their balance is. Then they've also been doing tests where they'll, for example, put electricity into the neck really quickly, 
or electricity into the inner ear, and they find that scoliosis patients have these robust responses lots of times on one side, again, verifying that the cerebellum is not filtering the inner ear activity. Now you can see here, uh, for those of us watching the live version, the cerebellum is rather big. Cerebellum actually has as many brain cells in the screen structure as you do in the rest of your brain. So it's very dense and compact. And the area right in here, as well as down through here, is called the flocculonodular lobe, and then we have the nodules and the uvula all in this area. And these areas of the cerebellum are critical for filtering inner ear input. They're also critical for knowing where our head is in relationship to our neck. So I, my fist is representing our neck down here. So your brain has to come up with this orientation. It's called a body head reference frame for where you're at. And they've found in scoliosis patients, if you put them in the dark and you give them basically like a, a laser line level, that their perception of what vertical is is completely not correct, which is majorly an inner ear and cerebellar issue. That's very, very well confirmed. So it's called an abnormal subjective visual vertical. And scoliosis patients have an abnormality there. So they may think that vertical is over here. So as a consequence, they're tilting their head the other direction, trying to compensate for that. So that's basically the nitty gritty on it. Kathy, does that kind of make does, sense? Well, does, does that have a lot to do with the fact that you just said that this happens a lot in like the left ear and not the other ear? So is that going to throw, I mean, to me, that sounds like, okay, if that's doing it on one side, not the other, that's going to affect balance or even your, your thought of vertical. Yeah, that could, and that could very well be part of it. And then some of the other studies are showing that not only is it the inner ear, but it's a cerebellar processing issue. So it could be both. Now, that one study I referenced about the inner ear being formed abnormally, that was done in children. I haven't really seen that replicated. There's actually way more research on the cerebellum, but it does deserve attention because hopefully more and more people will start looking at that. Another thing I didn't mention, scoliosis patients. Cerebellum down here, bottom of the brain. At the bottom of your skull is a hole called the foramen magnum. And they're actually finding that scoliosis patients need to have an upright MRI. Most MRI scans done of the brain or the neck are done with the person laying down. They find that when scoliosis patients stand up, their cerebellum is pulled down lower than it should be. And it's actually a, a pretty significant percentage. Some of the research I was saying, they were kind of astounded and alarmed, basically making the point that all scoliosis patients need to have this upright MRI. So if you know someone with scoliosis, pay attention to something called Arnold Chiari malformation, as well as just being aware it's called basically the cerebellar nodulus. How, how far down is that sitting when they're, how far down is that coming down when they're standing up? So if they're, if they're laying down, the imaging isn't going to happen like it does in, Someone without scoliosis, they've got to stand up. they got to stand up, and are, yeah. there, are there machines that are made that way? Yeah, actually, there are. Okay. Yeah, I believe even the one 100 yards away from us here that was just put in, um, I believe they have standing open-air MRI. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so, so that pretty much covers it. We're also seeing that scoliosis patients, for example, if you do MRIs of how thick their brain is we're finding areas associated with inner ear processing can be less dense. Net some of it, scoliosis, we think it's a spine problem. It can be a spine problem in a rare percentage. I think it's around 15% where someone will have a deformed vertebra. So rather than it being like a square, it's more like a trapezoid. And that can cause the spine to jut out to one side. But otherwise, you really need to start looking at the brain and scoliosis is kind of a common term but when you work with scoliosis patients you realize that once they get above 40 degrees they're oftentimes recommended some pretty severe surgeries in my opinion where they'll put rods in the back i'm not saying that's a bad thing but rods up and down your spine is pretty uh it's a pretty invasive procedure you know, invasive and it's very hard to live with isn't it a lot of people, yeah, I've even seen patients where they've broken the rods. 
because their right. spine was so tight and the curvature basically resisted the rods and fractured the rods. So, so there's no, that. And going back to what you said, Kathy, about how the inner ear was deformed on the left, it's very interesting that most scoliosis patients have a right curvature in their thoracic spine. So not all, but most have a right curvature. So maybe that relates to that left inner ear being abnormal. Hard to say. These are questions that hopefully we'll have answers to in the next two to three years. Okay, my question is, and I think probably everybody else out there that's listened this morning, we've gone through this and we're learning that this has a lot to do with the cere cerebellum in our mm -hmm. brain. Do any of these exercises or anything that you conduct or the testing that you do, do you have any luck kind of countering these effects? Yeah, I have. And actually, the, a lot of the tests that I mentioned that they're doing to figure this out are tests that we do every day, all day with our patients from a functional neurology standpoint. So it's video nystagmography. You guys have heard me talk about this expensive piece of machinery that we have that quantifies how the eyes are moving. That's one of the principal tests used to figure out how your inner ear and your cerebellum are processing. So yeah, we do that testing and then we give patients specific rehab exercises to start building back the side of the cerebellum or the inner ear that are not firing as well. The simple analogy is it's like your car's out of alignment here in your cerebellum and your inner ear. So what's gonna happen? You're gonna pull one direction, you're gonna tilt one direction. Well, if we start reinforcing that weak side, then what can happen? And that's where I've seen, Kathy, uh, basically a cessation or stopping of the progression of the scoliosis. Depends on the person's age. If the curvature is already starting to form because they're at skeletal maturity, it's hard to change it at that point. But we do work with young individuals to try and bring them back to know what normal is. So. Well, I, I'm, and I, that was going to be my next question. If the curvature is already there, yeah, you're not going to be able right. to bring that back. But I'm guessing whatever you're doing in the rehab is going to help with their balance and maybe that thing of knowing you know, which, which way is vertical, yep. having that more natural feeling. Mm -hmm. Completely. That is what okay. we do. Mm -hmm. So. I you had an answer. <laughs> So I think that pretty well covers it. So if you know someone with scoliosis, make sure they're getting their inner ear checked. Make sure they're having their cerebellum analyzed in their skull with them standing up with a standing MRI. And let them know that most cases of, at, of adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, which primarily involve females, are being found to have a brain component. So exciting stuff. Normally involves females. That's yeah. the thing that normally involves females. I'm mm -hmm. really getting tired of this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we are persecuted as a gender. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> there just seems to be quite a few things to pick on women. Just, just saying, okay? That's true. That's true. I guess we all have our things. <laughs> uh, uh, apparently, but uh, yeah. it is good to know that because it's, like I said, especially my generation, most people just thought it was a congenital thing, something you're born with, something you live with. Uh, and like you said, some people go through some surgeries that are painful and not normally something anybody wants to go through. So right. if they want to do some testing, and, and like you said, adolescent, I assume it's the time to catch this and do something with it before there's too much damage to the spine. That's my take on it. If you have a little one and they're developing scoliosis, that's the time to start addressing these factors for sure before that spine, you know, matures. And then it's and then, basically like said, set in stone. And make sure they get the standing MRI, which most of us weren't even aware existed. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's a lot we learned this morning. So yeah, good. You. All right, so we got good information out there. So for any of you watching now or later, if you have any questions, post it as a comment. I'll get back to you. And we'll be back next Saturday morning with something else interesting. So everyone have a happy Memorial Day. I think we can say that. I think we can say yes, happy and be safe. Yeah, and be safe. And uh, we'll see you next week. All right. Bye, guys. End the video.